really have to mess with these too much, but play around, look at it, see if there's anything that you consider to be useful. I've actually left all of this at default and everything is just fine. So, um, once again, not something that you need for your PBX to work. Inbound routes. Okay, you are going to have to set these up in order to receive calls. So, if you look at all the different inbound route settings you've got, um, all of these are very. Let's let's go ahead and click on one, and I'll show you how these work. Okay, you're basically you're going to put the DID in and a description, and you're going to set up like if you'll if you'll note here we have a time condition set up that's a semi advanced feature um, we probably won't have time to can talk about how we can figure that today but I will go over basics in just a little bit but you can set the destination you need to set the destination actually if, if you don't specify something nothing will happen so obviously you've got your DID number and then you've got what you want it to do when it rings on that specific line and you've got a variety of options here you can have it go to a time condition a miscellaneous destination which could be just a, a cell phone number or something um, phone book directory you can have it terminate the call um, you, I mean you, you can do all kinds of stuff extensions you, you'll you can specify an extension to ring when say somebody calls two 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 all right you want that to go to a specific extension um, say you have a whole bunch of numbers with your SIP trunk which most people are going to you'll have it ring a specific extension so this is how you set that in the inbound route settings you do have to have everything that I've talked about so far inbound outbound trunk extension all of those are required in order for your PBX to function even on a rudimentary level so you can go back and, and look at all these different things alright um, zap channels, announcements, blacklist, caller ID lookup services, day and night control, follow me IVR, um, we're not going to cover most of this stuff today because it's not really necessary for function but we will go over a few things, IVR for example is that annoying thing <laughs> that you hear when you know thank you for calling computer X your call is important to us please press 1 to reach so and so press 2 for blah 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 plus 3 if you're sick and tired of this message um, this is how you would set this up it's in an IVR and you can chain IVRs together let's go ahead and click one of these okay IVRs really you have to map these out um, you can set up simple IVRs, but even then you must set up recordings and you have to be very specific how you do this because you could break your system. Um, you would make it to, <laughs> basically you're setting up a map for people and it has to be navigable. If it's not navigable, no one's going to use it and people are just going to get frustrated when they call you. So, um, we'll, we'll, we'll have to cover that another time um, or you can actually look up setting up a basic IVR. Um, I've seen a couple of, of videos on YouTube how to do that. Um, or you can just look how and see how I have this set up. Um, different numbers basically do different things and you daisy chain the combinations to get together. Okay. So, um, and by the way, you can actually set up an IVR without any of those voice messages. People just don't know, won't know what they're doing. So, you actually have to make system recordings and upload those. Um, and let's see, let's go to announcements. You can actually add announcements here um, to be played when people call or when people are on hold. Um, caller ID lookup sources. We're not going to cover that today. All right. Let's go. Ring groups. Those are important. You may have to install the ring group module. Basically, when people call, um, a lot of the times in an office, you're going to want all the phones to ring in a specific area. Okay? So, you can set up a variety of ring groups and make that happen. Um, let's show this one right here. All phones. Okay? 
Now, I've got an extension list that I want to ring when, uh, when this ring group is being used. You'll notice it says used as a destination by two objects. One says time condition, another says parking lot. Those are things that I mapped to make this ring group um, their destination. All right. So I have these extensions in here. I have the ring time that I want when the specific conditions to meet this ring group uh, are met. I have the strategy set as ring all. Okay. You can set up hunt groups, first available, first not on phone. You can do all that stuff if you want. Um, it's all fairly self-explanatory, but at any rate, ring all is going to ring every phone, every extension that number that you have here. And remember, we set up all the extensions earlier. So um, you can give an announcement, all right, when that ring group occurs. And I do have those configured in some of them for use with the IVR, all right. Play music on hold. You can do that, or you can just have it ring when they're on hold um, or when they're using this ring group, okay? There are a variety of settings here. Once again, the popovers kind of tell you what they do. Destination of no answer. In this case, we have it going to an IVR. You could have it just go straight to a voicemail, okay, or any one of these destinations. But, um, for example, you could use a ring group in an IVR to reach a MISC destination and uh, put a cell phone number in there so that it would forward the calls at a specific time to that cell phone. Very useful feature, and it's actually in use on this PPX. All right. Let's continue down time conditions. All right. Time conditions are a feature that is used to, all right, say you've got business hours from 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. Okay? Um, let's go ahead and click on that because I think that's what we actually have set up. All right. So, your time condition name, just right here. All right. Associate, that's really, day and night mode isn't really important right now. Um, destination if time matches, okay? And I have it set to go to that specific ring group. If time does not match, I have it set to go straight to the IVR. So, I don't know if you remember, the all phones ring group I had set to ring for 20 seconds. It rang all the extensions, and then after 20 seconds it would go to the IVR. Um, and then it would leave a voicemail. Well, on the weekend, no one's going to be answering the phone. So I don't want it to ring for 20 seconds. That's just going to annoy people, and it's going to make them think that somebody's in the office when they're really not. So what I did was I set it to go straight to an IVR if this time condition is not met. All right. So how do we set that up? Well, time groups. Okay, this is going to show your server time. And you can see right here, business hours, I've set up a time group for use with the time condition. Okay, see that? And it's showing it here. It's showing that this particular time group is being used by the time condition business hours, which I just showed you. Okay, and I have it set time to start, 7 p.m. to 7, or sorry, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Friday. And then you have to set that, mon the month of the day, start and finish, start and finish for the year. Okay, so obviously you can be very specific with this. And you can daisy chain them together, all right? So right down here, time to start 8 to 3 on Saturdays. So you can keep on adding these time conditions so that you can have every day of the week or even year. You can just continuously add these um, if you want. And every time you add one, it, it puts a new time down here. So you can keep on daisy chaining them together. But anyway, those two, once you have them together, both time conditions and time groups, can be used in conjunction with ring groups and your IVR settings to control what your PBX does and when it does it. So that's very useful. Um, you, you will have to know how to do that. Um, and I will say this, <laughs> since Trixbox CE is no longer in production, um, people get confused. Even Trixbox support had trouble with this. That's why I'm actually talking about it. So um, 
if you, if you looked at, I showed you exactly how I set up each one, you can go through in slow motion and set up your own and play with it. But you need to set it up this way in order for it to work. If you don't, it will not work. Okay? So it'll basically just continue doing what, what your PBX was doing before you set up the time condition and the time group. <laughs> so it'll kind of frustrate you. I know it did me. Okay. So moving on. You can go to internal options and configuration. Um, callback, you can have people schedule a callback. Okay. Um, like if somebody calls and you, you can have somebody. All right. I, I don't know if you've called a company up before where you, you call them and it allows you to stay on hold or it allows you to request a callback or leave a message. Well, an IVR is going to allow you to set up those things. Okay, but this callback option, um, this is how that's how you would set that up right here. You'd put the callback number, callback description, um, and then delay before callback. Okay, so you could put in a number of seconds there um, before your phone system would automatically call them back and put them on hold. Okay, when or you could set destination after callback. Um, you can put a specific extension or a ring group here. You can you can set it to reach a hunt group, um, so that as soon as somebody gets off the phone, it it places the callback. This is that's how you would do that right here. Okay, and um, that is a semi advanced feature, but that's where you would do it. Um, I'm not going to go over it any more than I just did. Conferences you can set up conference calls here. Um, you can add a conference room and set up a pin. Um, messages, all that, uh, very useful. But once again, it's an advanced feature, and you can you can play around with that if you want. DISA. Um, this is an advanced feature, but I'm going to talk about it a little bit because there seems to be confusion as to what DISA really is. Now, and it is very useful for companies. Um, all right. So let's say I have a couple of people that remote in, and they're not actually on the at the workplace where the system is located and say they don't even have a VPN um, say they're just using cell phones um, say we're talking about a technician who's out in the field he wants to be able or his boss wants him to be able to place calls using the PBX for whatever reason either so that the call can be recorded so that the number the company number shows up instead of his cell phone um, not everybody wants their cell phone given out any of those reasons and more, you'd want to set up a DISA. Okay, DISA is basically going to allow users with that can authenticate using an extension and a, and a passcode. Um, it's going to allow them to place calls using the PBX. So, let's see what we've got here. Okay, see that? 